Hello and welcome back to another episode of 3 to 12 Rounds. With me today, I've got a very special guest, Conry Gracie. How's everything been going over there in California uh, at the moment with your training and everything? I mean, it's, it's rough over here. I mean, the, the state itself, because of the whole coronavirus going on, the state itself is, is pretty shut down right now. All of uh, the Hoist Gracie gyms, even around the world, for, most, for the most part, most of them are closed currently. Um, hopefully, most states uh, in the United States will be opening back up soon. But unfortunately, California is one of those that is kind of going to hold off, you know, till the very last minute. So um, right now, it's very minimal training. You know, I'm trying not to be around too many people just to kind of keep others safe and myself safe. Absolutely. And starting off, being in the most widely acknowledged and respected family in the world of mixed martial arts history, um, you know, they played a massive role in why martial arts is the way it is today. At what age when you were growing up did you understand that this is what I'm, I'm going to do? Because obviously, you know, it's kind of inevitable being a Gracie, but I also read that you played some soccer growing up as well. Was that something that yeah. you ever thought you would have some temptation towards moving into or was it always martial arts? Yeah, I mean, I, I really wanted to play, um, you know, growing up, I really wanted to play soccer in college and in the university. Um, and uh, about my senior year in high school, I just realized that, you know what, like I have this whole family legacy that I could be taking a part in. So why not capitalize on what I've pretty much been doing my whole life? So you mentioned in a previous interview that your father, Hoyce, uh, told you as long as you step inside the cage at some point in your career, you're obviously, you're continuing the Gracie legacy. Did that take some pressure off you starting out your, your pro career in mixed martial arts? Did it take pressure off of me? Um, I would say the first fight for me was definitely a little nerve wracking. It was definitely a new experience because I had only fought uh, one amateur fight previously before I had gone pro. Um, you know, I've been training jiu-jitsu my whole life, but nothing ever really, really, truly prepares you for the first time you step in that cage. You have no idea what is coming your way. And, uh, and I think that the first fight was honestly probably one of, one of, if not the, like, best lessons I could have learned inside that cage, you know? Um, I still have a long way to go. I have a lot of experience to gain, hopefully over the next, you know, many, many years. But that first fight definitely has taught me a lot. What were some of the big lessons that you took away from, from that first fight? I would just say it was, it was a lack of experience, a lack of truly knowing what I was doing. Um, I would say... Now I study my opponents a lot more. I definitely um, go through like fight day scenarios a lot more than I did before. Um, you know, it's just, there's a lot of preparation that goes into fights outside of just training, you know? There's studying, there's, you know, watching film, there's, uh, you know, even if it is slow, very slow motion, but you learn the, the footsteps, where your opponent's going to step, where he's going to punch, how he punches. There's a lot of different things that you break down that I do with each of my coaches, you know, being in their relative, you know, martial art, they'll break down what they think is, is going on. Yeah. And you're looking a lot more comfortable as, as each fight goes on as well. Uh, speaking of your father earlier, you know, he's an absolute legend of the sport of mixed martial arts, the pioneer, you know, he won the very first UFC one tournament. Um, do you remember ever going to his fights much when you were younger? Uh, I remember the last one I remember was going to uh, the Coliseum here in LA by a uh, university of Southern California. The, their stadium is named the Coliseum. So he fought there one time. Uh, and I do remember that fight, but that was the last fight I remember. Right. And since your, your debut, you're now on a two-fight win streak after your win over Oscar Vera. Uh, you can see how, obviously, how comfortable you are when things go to the ground. But in the last fight, even the last two fights, you looked a lot more comfortable standing and trading on your feet as well. You were incorporating more kicks, more knees to yeah. your game as well, a bit more of maybe a Muay Thai background. Was that a game plan going into that to showcase more standing on the feet? It's not 
I never train stand up to go in there and showcase it. If it comes out, then that's great and it comes out. But you learn the stand up in my case, I'll learn the stand up to almost know what's coming, to know what kind of a fighter I'm going to be fighting. If it is a boxer, I'll go to the boxing gym a lot, but not to be able to outbox a boxer, you know? I'll be in the gym with a boxer um, just to learn how his feet work, how his hands work, which way his body's going to turn and move, you know? And then at that point, like you, like I said, you break it down into if he's a righty, if he's a lefty, how many kicks is he going to throw? Uh, where does he step this like all this stuff plays you know into the fight game having a structured diet plan is something that every fighter aims to have and i've also heard of the the gracie diet uh, and there's also a book that's been written on it is that a specific diet that you stick to yourself or do you just aim to eat as healthy as you can in your training no i definitely stick to what we call the gracie diet which is it's just a way for easy digestion so that you know the day or the week before the fight you're not getting you know throwing up sick or or just not feeling like on top of your game are there any tricks and tips you can give to current fighters who are leading up to their fight i would just say you know not minimize the amount of carbs that you intake but definitely stick to one carb per meal, you know, don't mix your sugar foods, you know, with your meats or chickens um, uh, or steak or anything like that. I would just, you know, try to keep it very basic. Um, A lot of fighters have to cut weight, you know, so this might not exactly work for everyone, but you're gonna have to, you know, check how much you're putting in your body but i don't cut weight so you know if it is maybe a couple pounds so for me i can just eat you know follow gracie diet but eat pretty much as much as i want uh yeah i can pretty much eat as much as i want and um you know not have to worry about any of that so but i would definitely say you know don't try to mix a ton of things because it's just it's not good for your body to end up digesting it all like that that's some good tips. And that's got to be good, not having to cut weight um, for your fight. Obviously, that's, it's like the, the, the final bit of prep before fight day is getting down to, to that weight class. So it's good that you're kind of, you're kind of comfortable at that welterweight um, going into fight day. Absolutely. I mean, cutting weight is, it can either be, you know, a huge problem for some fighters or it can be, you know, a huge blessing for some like me, you know, that don't have to cut that many, that don't have to, uh, um you know lose 10 20 pounds you know at a time and and you know once you start pushing that 15 pound limit that 20 pound limit so it gets really really hard on the body and do you know a rough estimate of when you'll be back inside the octagon again i have it's a bit hard to tell right now yeah i have no idea just because um just because you know the whole coronavirus is going around and and i know that there are I know UFC just hosted a fight this past weekend, but as of right now, um, I do not know currently when I am fighting. Um, but hopefully it will be soon. And, you know, as long as we're all staying safe out there. Exactly. Uh, with most fighters, there's always that one opponent who they hope to one day share the octagon with. Have you got that dream matchup of yourself? Um, currently, no. Currently, I am working my way up. So, you know, eventually, whoever is the title holder, I think right now it's Douglas Lima for the welterweight category. Um, You know, eventually, if he is still champion when I get there, then, you know, I would love to fight him, love to be there, you know, in the octagon with him. He is a well-respected fighter and, and, you know, it would be an honor for me.